What is up, YouTubers? It is Warren. It is here, and we are back with another YouTube video. So yeah, uh, it has been a while since I've actually done a video on my channel, but I'm really happy to be back. Um, yeah, I've been really quite busy with university work, so um, but here I am. And yeah, what I want to do today, I'm actually starting a new series for you guys. Um, I previously made some Game Maker Studio tutorials, and some of the videos I've produced previously have got some amazing feedback. And um, yeah, I really carry, well, I want to carry on making this series because um, yeah, through making a game in the Game Maker engine, like personally, I've had a, a lot of trials and tribulations. And to be honest, um, yeah, I'd rather you guys not have to go through like the pains that I've had to go through with the engine um, and I really just want to showcase to you guys some of the best bits. Now the thing is um, my previous videos they were made using GameMaker 1.4 uh, but now I want to use GameMaker 2 because for one it's more up to date um, yeah and there are a couple of good things about it. Um, the first is that yeah, Game Maker 2 uses DirectX 11 uh, as opposed to DirectX 9. Um, that subsequently means that uh, you'll get much more FPS in like Windows build games because um, yeah, it's a much newer graphics API. Um, and the other thing is that soon uh, Windows will also have a 64-bit export uh, runtime option so you'll be able to export your games in 64 bit which is absolutely amazing I've wanted that for so long <laughs> um, but yeah today uh, what I want to cover I just want to cover a tiny bit about the series before I actually get into it all but um, this series what it's gonna be about what I've noticed is that um, yeah a lot of tutorials on YouTube have already been covered um, and for that reason I want to only give you guys like really advanced concepts that have not really necessarily been covered by other people on YouTube. So um, I'd say if you're really new to Game Maker, I wouldn't advise following my tutorials because they're really quite advanced. Um, I'm really aiming this tutorial series at like professional level like game development and like industry standard practice. So. Um, I'm studying at university in my final year for game design now and yeah I have a quite a yeah versatile understanding of how to make games now so um, but yeah in this first tutorial what we want to be covering is uh, initializing the game project in Game Maker 2 using Delta Time. Now with Delta Time having used it myself in Game Maker and having it not really like supported by default um there are a few things you need to be aware of like actually using it as a system um the first thing is that like the typical alarm system that's included in game maker if you want to use alarms to actually like take note of how much time has passed if you're using delta time that won't work for example um the third next thing actually um Particle systems. Um, if you've ever used particle systems in Game Maker, uh, using Delta Time with particle systems will not work. Um, well, it will work, but the particles will spew out an amazing speed and it'll look completely unrealistic. Um, and there's really small things like that that you've got to be cautious about when using Delta Time. Um, and considering that um, it is a topic that's not really being covered in depth by other YouTubers. It's something that I really want to focus on in this series. So, um, yeah, today we're going to be initializing a game project using Delta Time, and it's going to take some basic control input for a player. Um, you can actually download this project as well, and all my other projects that I'm going to be using for this series um, in the download link below in the description. Um, one other final thing to note is that if I bring up an object right here, um, yeah, all of my code that I'm writing in these tutorials is going to be royalty-free uh, Creative Commons license. So if you want to use any bit of this code in your own work, um, just, yeah, give me a bit of credit, that's all I ask for. Um, yeah, and you can use it for absolutely free, even commercial. So, um, yeah, 
So, let's get into this. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is actually why the game speed. So, we did cover this in the previous tutorials, but um, I just want to make sure, like, if you're new to my series, uh, you're fully aware of this. So, in Game Maker 1.4, we had room speed, uh, but that has changed in Game Maker 2 to actually, like, a global setting. Um, if we go and click in the options right here, this is in the resources panel. Um, I like to have my resources on one side and then the room editor on the other so I can drag and drop objects in. So uh, yeah, it makes it a bit easier, that's all. Click the main tab and then by default you will have uh, that set to 30 right there, if I can type in, <laughs> like that. So it would be 30 frames a second. Uh, but we don't want that, we actually want the game to be updating as fast as it possibly can. So we're going to do 9999 because I believe that's the highest possible value you can use. Um, and then the game is going to update in speed at 60 frames a second. So uh, yeah, leave it 9999, hit apply and OK. Right then, so uh, let's get into this. So I'm going to enlarge this as well so you guys can see it a bit better. Uh, can I increase the size a bit? That's much better. Alright then, so the first thing, uh, we want to force the Game Maker engine to use microsecond increments as opposed to uh, FPS increments with, well, when referring to the game speed. So to do that, um, do game underscore set speed and then, this is going to be a bit strange, but 16,666, uh, comma, game speed, microseconds, like that, and close it. Um, so what that's doing, basically, if I open up a calculator, this will make it a little bit easier to explain, but uh, we want the game to update at 60 updates a second, like actually real time. So to do that, we do 1 divided by 60, and that equals 0.016666 recurring and it ends with a 7 in the calculator but yeah so that is how many game updates are happening um, yeah per second I believe uh, but to convert that into microseconds we need to multiply it by 1 million and that gives us that magic number 16,666 and yeah, that's what we're using here. So that's basically representing uh, 1 60th of a second in microseconds. So yeah, right then. So now that's covered, uh, there's also one other small thing I need to cover before we get into the coding. Um, yeah, go back to the workspace tab and if we bring up the initialize object, um, when you create an object, like typically I have like a controller object and the controller object is persistent and it never gets destroyed. So typically, in this instance, I'm using obj initialize. And obj initialize is the very first object that's created at the start of the game. Um, if we go into the initialize room and then hit creation code, uh, we need to create this object. So to do that, just do instance create. Uh, I'm going to use depth here, but you can use layer if you're using that system. Uh, and then we want just 0, 0 for the coordinates and then use a depth for like negative 4096. Uh, it can be whatever you want, it's invisible, but I just like to do it at a high level. Um, and then obj underscore initialize, like that. So that's in the room creation code of the initialize room. So we're actually creating that uh, controller object now. Uh, save that. And then if we go back to uh, the create event, um, yeah, so this object has been created now, and it's persistent, so it will be constantly in existence until the game ends. Um, right, so, now that's out of the way, uh, we can actually go back to this. So, we actually need to declare some global variables. So, I'm actually going to do a small uh, header here, uh, and do define globals, like so. And yeah, what we want to do here is create some variables that can be addressed in any object. So uh, yeah, these are going to be manipulated by this initialized controller object. So all we need to do is global there, and then space, we're going to do delta, and frame delta, 
And then we're going to do frame delta underscore override. More about that in a moment. Uh, desired FPS. And finally, paused. Like so. End with a semicolon. So yeah, these are all global variables, but we haven't actually assigned a value to them yet. Uh, the game just knows that they've been initialized. Uh, we can set some of them though right now. So we can set the desired FPS to equal 60. Uh, quick note as well, if you change that to 30, that will actually half the game speed. Uh, that's important. So this is how many updates in real time you want the game to like update per second. So uh, 60 is generally is what you use in like video games, but if you really wanted to push the vote out, you could do 120, but I think that's overkill for a 2D game. So you might as well just leave it at 60, but that choice is yours. So um, we've got the desired FPS and we can also set paused to equal zero, like so. And I believe that is it. So, so actually, I can cut that there, put it in that comment there. So that's how I've laid it out. <laughs> um, so, calculate the change in time per step. So, right then, now what we need to do is simply calculate the delta variable. So, do delta, and that equals delta time. divided by 1 million. Yeah, like so. So what we're doing there, uh, delta time is the time passed in microseconds between a game step. And then we're dividing that by a million to convert that uh, change in time from microseconds into seconds. And then we can use that delta value uh, to essentially accelerate the game if it slows down. So, um, yeah, just a bit of, like, off topic here, what delta actually stands is for. Um, delta actually stands for uh, change. Yeah, that, like, I believe that's all it stands for, is just change. Uh, but yeah, what we're actually measuring here is the change in time. So, uh, yeah, that's just a bit off topic, but that's what delta means, um, if you're a bit curious, and that's where I've got the value, like, name from. Uh, yeah, so calculate the game acceleration relative of the delta. So now what we need to do, we need to set the frame delta override to equal the delta, I believe. Oh, sorry, no, the desired FPS. Uh, and then we can do multiplied by the delta, yeah. So that is essentially taking the change in time uh, per second, um, and then multiplying it by 60 between each step. Um, the reason I'm using this override variable, um, yeah, when you create certain objects in the game, um, you can actually use delta time to pause the game. That's the beauty of it. Um, if you set pause to 1, uh, I'll do this later on, but if you set pause to 1, um, it will basically set the frame delta to 0. And if the frame delta is zero, then you will not get any acceleration in the game whatsoever because we multiply uh, anything that has speed using delta time by the frame delta. And subsequently, because of that, there's certain objects in the game that actually have to function even if the game is paused. So say, for example, you have a button object uh, in the pause menu uh, and that has animation. Uh, you don't want the animation to just stop if the game is paused because, like, it's at the end of the day, it's part of a GUI, and uh, yeah, you want it to consistently like animate whether the game is paused or not. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason behind that. Um, so we can actually use that variable to like basically accelerate any object in the game. Uh, yeah, N well negating whether the fact whether the game is paused so um but for the elements in the game that do need to stop where they're paused we can set the frame delta so frame delta and that simply needs to equal the frame delta underscore override and then multiply it by not paused 
So what that is doing, uh, if the game is unpaused, uh, we can represent that with a zero. Uh, but if the game is paused, that will become one. Now, we want the game to function when the game is not paused. So if we multiply by zero here, that will basically pause the game when you're actually playing it and unpause it when it's paused. <laughs> and we, we don't want to do that. So uh, yeah, make sure you got not there. That's represented by an exclamation mark. Um, yeah, all that's doing is inversing a Boolean variable. So uh, yeah, so that's basically going to pause the frame delta and set it to naught if the game is paused, which is what we want. And finally, uh, yeah, we can actually send the player into the main menu because we've initialized the game now and we can actually just like do whatever we want to do. So in the context of this video, I want to keep it short, so I'm just putting a player object in, we're not having a main menu or anything. Uh, I'm just going to do room underscore go to uh, open bracket and I'm going to call it rm game. Right, so it's not created yet, but I can do room, uh, actually I can do, yeah, I'll do room create room and then we'll just need to rename that to rm game and then in the settings down here we'll set that to 960 by 540 so that's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio actually that uh, and finally I believe that was it so yeah we've actually got the initialize object uh, done and dusted in the create event we just need to do the uh, yeah step event now so zoom out a tiny bit um, we can actually copy and paste some of this code directly into the step event so um, we'll go back to the workspace I'm using the begin step event for this object the uh, reason I'm using begin step is because I want all of these calculations that are happening in the initialize object to essentially be calculated before anything else in the game. Um, yeah, and then we can use them values to actually like accelerate objects depending on like the current uh, performance of the game and like how it's running. So uh, yeah, go back into the begin step event of the initialize object and then we can just simply paste that in there so I'll get rid of that and I believe that is actually it for the begin step event so all we're doing here is just actually like calculating the frame delta uh, every begin step event so yeah go back to the workspace we can actually close out of that now and yeah just hit save so we saved it now um one thing I might want to mention actually while I'm here I'm going to create a quick draw event and I'm also going to do draw GUI, right? And I'll also copy that and put the header in there like that. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, full screen that again. Um, I actually just want to do quickly draw set color uh, dollar FFFFFF. So that's white. Uh, draw. text uh, then let's do 16 16 for the time being and then FPS close quotation plus string FPS now we can close that and then draw set color minus one like so so I'm just drawing the FPS to the screen there uh, that's not actually create a variable yet though, so I just need to initialize that, but um, what I'm doing here, I'm basically going to show you how timers work using delta timing, because this is important. Uh, we can't use an alarm event using delta time, it just does not work. Um, that's because that's occurring like per step, and they can be up to 9999 steps in one second, and we don't want that, so um, yeah, go to the create event of the initialize object and I'll just uh, full screen that as well so can I put that in put that in there yeah so we've got them all in one now um, yeah we just want to create one more variable and call, let's call it uh, FPS and then simply we can just set uh, FPS to equal real oh fps underscore real like that um and then in the begin step event uh 
Oh, there's one more variable we actually need, uh, but this doesn't need to be a global there, we can just do a local variable, so let's call it timer, and then equals one. Uh, and then in the step event, uh, we need to update this timer. So to update the timer, you do timer minus equal, so that's relative subtraction, uh, open bracket, one over the desired FPS multiplied by the frame delta. So what that is doing, that is essentially subtracting uh, 1 60th from the value every 1 60th of a second uh, in short term. Uh, then we can check if the timer uh, is less than or equal to zero, uh, one second has been passed. So then we can set timer to start at one again. So this occurs every step um, and it just resets the timer every time it ends. Uh, and then we can just do FPS equals FPS real like that. So then we can just do calculate FPS. So that's only going to update the FPS variable every, uh, yeah, every second. So, yeah, that just makes it a bit easier to read, that's all. Uh, and yeah, this is the basics of an alarm system using delta time. So you can't actually use an alarm system, you've got to physically, like, calculate it yourself. Um, that's just one small hiccup of the system, uh, but we've got that out of the way now. Oh, timer equals one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so FPS, and it's updating once a second. And as you can see, we're getting like 4,000, 4,600. Uh, yeah, but now, now that we've got that out of the way, I actually just want to quickly set up a player object so we can get him moving in the game and accelerating like, via delta time. So I've already created a sprite in this example project, and we've already got an object. Uh, so all we need to do in the create event is just create some local variables. So I do k underscore up and it equals naught, then we can just paste that like four times, and then we can do net, oh actually we'll do direction underscore x and it equals naught, direction underscore y and it equals naught, and is there anything else I need? Uh, speed, and that equals, let's just say six, multiplied by the frame delta, like so. So we want to update that value every step in the player object, so the player knows how fast it's moving. Um, and then we want to copy these values actually, and then we want to paste them in here, but this time assign them to keyboard check, and then odd, uh, let's just say W on that one, close bracket, and then copy and paste that a bunch of times. And then we want, uh, that's key up, then we want key down, and then key right, and key left. And let's make sure they're right, so that's S, and then that is D, that is A. So just using W, S, and D. Uh, direction X equals, uh, bearing in mind, positive is towards the right of the screen. Well, that, I'm actually pointing to my left here, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm like actually pointing to my right if I turn around. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, positive is to the right, so what we need to do is do key uh, right, I believe, yeah, M minus key left. Uh, and it's just K. I <laughs> know we got that wrong then. Uh, and then copy that, paste it in direction Y, but we want to do up and down now. So down is positive, so we want to do K down minus K up. So what that's doing, essentially, uh, we're doing, if the player is pressing the right key, uh, it'll equal 1. 
uh, and only the right key that is. If we press the right key and the left key, we're doing 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we're getting the direction of x, which is 0. And likewise, if we press the left key, we're doing 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. So direction x and direction y, they both return negative 1, 0, or 1, depending on the direction that we're going in. So we can use that to control the player's movement. So now all we need to do is simply bind that to the player's location. So all we need to do is x plus equals direction x multiplied by k, uh, uh, speed, sorry. Yeah, like that. And finally, copy that for the y, and then we just want to replace that direction y and the y value for the object. And one final thing, uh, oh wait, we've got it there, 6 times frame delta, yeah. We could have actually just set the speed value to 6 and then multiplied it by the frame delta down here, but uh, it makes no difference. So, yeah, when you're multiplying the speed by the frame delta, that's basically calculating the speed relative of the game's acceleration. So, anytime you've got player movement or like, acceleration, image speed, you name it, it all has to be multiplied or in very finite cases divided by the frame delta. Um, so yeah, I just want to point that out, that's a really important variable and you will be using it a lot in the actual game project. So now we've got that, uh, we literally just need to go into the new room and then place the object in there and hopefully that is our project sorted. So press the D key and we move to the right and press the A key we move to the left. Uh, press both and we don't move at all and then up and down press both we don't move at all. So yeah uh, we're actually moving the player relative to delta time and the player is like remaining at the same speed even though the FPS is like drastically changing and yeah that is a basic uh, introduction to how to use Delta Time in Game Maker 2. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial guys. Um, this will be a, a consistent series now as well. Um, I've got a lot planned for this. I've literally got a notepad over here and it's got like a, about 20 episodes planned in it. So um, yeah I really want to get back into making these tutorials so I really quite enjoy it. And yeah i will see you guys in the next video so um don't forget to give it a like as usual if you found it informative uh, leave a comment if you have any problems i'll get back to you and of course subscribe so uh yeah without further ado adios <laughs>